Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at poking a hole in a photograph or another image inside Illustrator. Now I've done things before where we've actually cut type out of an image. So it's the type that's been filled with the image, but let's do it the other way around. What if we want to create a hole that is the shape of type inside an image? So I'm going to start by opening a file. I've got one already available that I've sized just to a nice value. So let's just go and open it. It's from unsplash.com and it is an image that is a free stocks image. So this is the image and it is the size of my artboard. I've just created it as 1920 by 1080 so that it would be a nice size to work with. So let's have a look and see how we're going to do this. The first thing I'm going to do is put something behind this so we can actually see that the cutout is working. So I'm going to my layers palette. I'm going to add a rectangle that is the exact size of the artboard. I'm going to fill it with black. So let's just make it 1920 by 1080 in size. I'll turn off the stroke because I don't need a stroke for this. With it selected, I'm just going to center it on the artboard. Now let's just make these options a little bit bigger so you can see what's going on. So I have my image here and my rectangle. I'm going to put the rectangle behind the image. That means when I cut a hole in the image, we should be able to see black through it. The next thing is to prepare my type. So I'm going to the type tool. I'm just going to use the regular type tool. I'm going to type sunset. Now obviously it's really, really small. So I have it selected. I'm going to hold the shift key to enlarge it considerably. I'll press control zero. That would be command zero on the Mac. That just centers everything. I'm going to select over my type and adjust my typeface at this stage. I'm using Myriad Pro regular, so I'm just going to switch this to bold. That should be pretty good. The next thing I'm going to do is to copy this text. So I'll choose edit and then copy. So it's copied to the clipboard. That's the Windows clipboard or the Mac clipboard. I'm going to turn off the type because we don't need that any longer. I'm going to target this image layer, so I'll click on it here so that it is selected. The next thing we're going to use is the transparency option, and you can get to that by choosing Window and then Transparency. Now you can also get to this option through the Appearance panel, but I suggest you don't do that because the Appearance panel opens and closes itself when you least expect it. It's much easier to use the Transparency panel. This is our image, you should see the image here, and we're going to click here on Make Mask. Everything's gone black, that's just fine. I'll click Make Mask. Now this is my image, and you should see the image, and this is my mask. If you want to edit the mask, and we do, you need to click on the mask, because if you don't, things are not going to work. So you need a little border around this mask area here. At this point, we'll paste in our text, Edit, and then Paste. If I'd chosen paste in place, it would have gone in the same place as I copied it from, which would have been a better choice. So choosing edit and then paste in place would be a better choice than the one I just made. Now everything is black, but that's just fine. Let's turn off clip and you may need to do things like inverting the mask. With this transparency option, you've got two options here, clip and invert mask. So there's sort of four combinations that you can have of these turned on or off, and you might need to just fiddle around with one mask to the next as to which of these you need turned on and off. For this particular mask, we need clip turned off and invert mask turned off. This is giving us the desired result. Remember we put a black filled rectangle behind this photograph. So what we're seeing through the photograph is the text sunset and we're seeing through it to whatever it is behind, which in this case just happens to be that black filled rectangle. Now, before you exit the transparency option, before you close it down, there's a big thing to worry about. I'm just gonna open up my layers. You'll see in the layers, it says layer opacity mask. So we're not actually working with the image as we should be. 
So to get out of this transparency option, you have to click back on your image and that gives you your layers back the way that they should look. So if you see that your layers palette says something like opacity mask, just know that you haven't yet exited your transparency. So go and display your transparency panel if it's not already displayed and make sure you click on your image here and you'll find that your layers palette goes back to looking the way that it should. To prove that we've poked a hole in the photograph, let's go and recolor this particular rectangle. So I have it selected. I'm going up here to the recolor artwork dialog. I'm going to click on advanced options and I'm going to this assign panel. What we need to do because we chose black as our color is we need to click on here so that there's a little arrow here, not a dash, it has to be an arrow. You can't remap colors if that's not an arrow. I'm just gonna close this, I don't need that part of the dialog. Now I'll go to edit. Let's just increase the brightness of this and I can start dragging around to change the color of the underlying rectangle that we're seeing through this photograph to see. So let's choose a sort of orangey red color, maybe a little bit darker. Click OK and you can see that this is the rectangle that's changed color and what we're seeing is the photograph on top that has a hole punched through it, the shape of the text. Now the hole that's punched through it is a text hole and it's editable. Let's go back to our transparency panel. I'm going back to select this layer because this is the layer that has the transparency effect in it. So let's just click on it to select it. Here is our image, here is our text. I'll just click on the text and you can see that we now have it selected. Let's go to the type tool and I could reset this in lowercase. I finished making my change, although I could make other changes. I could change my font and my font size. I could also replace it in a different area. So I'm going to move it up a little bit. All those edits can be made but as soon as you finish those edits, don't forget to click back on your image so that your layers panel changes to reflect the document as it would typically be as you're working on it in Illustrator. So that's a way of punching a text shape hole inside an image in Illustrator and have that as a fully editable text effect. Before we finish, I have more Illustrator training at Skillshare.com. When you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to thousands of classes, including over 250 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you, which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer, and typically mine will be better. I also have Illustrator training at udemy.com, and there's a referral link for every one of my courses in the description below. Please feel free to share these with family, friends, and co-workers. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've learned things about Illustrator of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.